If you have bought a Mac Mini base variant like me or just planning to buy one, then I think you should consider the issue I am facing. The first issue is not being able to access the power button. The second is lack of ports options and the last one is shortage of storage. So today I'll talk about my experience with Mac Mini M4, how it performed for video editing and content creation and lastly how I solved the issue I mentioned earlier. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. I've been using it for a few weeks and my recent videos have been edited on this Mac Mini. So let's share my honest experience with you who M4 Mac Mini is best suited for and who should avoid it. This is the M4 Mac Mini. I think this is the most hyped computer of the year and rightly so. Why not? With the M4 Mac Mini, you can do 90% of the work, the remaining 10% maybe not they probably need a more powerful computer but if you fall into the 90 percent category then probably the mac mini m4 is the best computer that you can buy right now but there is a catch if you only buy the mac mini base variant it's the best value for money apple offers several upgrade options but if you fall into the trap of upgrading base variant you will end up spending so much that it no longer remains a value for money options the mac mini base variant currently cost around 599 dollars you will get 16 gb of ram and 256 gb of storage if you want to upgrade the storage to 512 gb the price goes up around 799 dollars and if you upgrade to 24 gb of ram along with 512 gb ssd it will cost around $999. When you go from the base M4 variant to M4 Pro chip, you get several upgrades. With base M4 chip, you will get 10 core CPU and 10 core GPU. The M4 Pro variant has 12 core CPU and 16 core GPU. The base M4 Pro Mac Mini has 24 GB of RAM and 512 GB of storage. But if we consider the pricing, M4 Pro chip version of Mac Mini cost around $1399. That's a huge jump from the base M4 Mac Mini which cost around $599. So I feel the best value variant was the one with M4 chip, 16 GB RAM and 256 6 GB storage. It's great for daily works, video editing for small teams, or if you are working on a software like Photoshop, Illustrator, this could be your best companion. If you upgrade just one component like storage or RAM, it's not great value anymore. So I think going for the best value variant is a smarter decision. And if I ever need more performance, then I'll go for the M4 Max Studio. Even though it cost around $19.99 that will be even better value for the money so my suggestion if you do very hardcore work skip the mac mini go for a mac studio with m4 chip that comes with 32 gb of ram or even you can upgrade the ram to 64 gb or even more depending on the workload and you will get additionally 512 gb of storage 10 g ethernet connection thunderbolt 5 and a card reader if your professional work is your full-time career and that is your bread and butter then you should invest in something more powerful like mac studio m3 ultra so that's cover the topic of upgrades and pricing yes if you get the base mac mini it will be worth it now let's talk about who the machine is perfect for if you use it for a certain type of work there are still limits to how far you can push it i've been using the base variant for myself what kind of work I do. I have been editing videos smoothly since the day one and the timeline playback is smooth. I can playback the video on my timeline in full resolution even when I am working with Sony 4K X AVC HS 10 bit clips after applying color grading and few effects. It can also do photo editing and thumbnail creation very smoothly. If you are doing graphic design or using app like Photoshop or Illustrator, this M4 Mac Mini is your best friend. 16 GB RAM is an app and the Apple RAM management is excellent. They use swap memory technology to give you more space for RAM demanding tasks. Even if you use Lightroom, unless you are editing hundreds of raw files at once, you won't face any major issue. In this case, you might see a little lag, but with Lightroom Classic, you have no travels now let's talk about the video editing many people will get the mac mini base variant for their video editing here you need to think about which software you use depending on that you can decide whether the base variant will be enough or you need to go for more powerful setup for an example if you're editing in both screen recording and live streaming you may face limitation let me explain i create tutorials videos on my computer that involves screen recording when i'm working on 
Adobe Premiere Pro or After Effects. So if I work on a Premiere Pro project and then if I send a composition to After Effects and if I do a few rotoscoping with some effects, it will already fill up the RAM and it will give me the low memory warning when that happens i need to shut down all the background apps so keep that in mind if your video editing involves multiple application workflow then mac mini base variant will be the limiting factor also for vfx or 3d rendering base variant is not ideal if you have 24 or 30 gb of ram you could definitely do complex work so those using premiere pro after effects and photoshop together at once the base variant might not be ideal let's be honest nowadays 16 gb of ram is like nothing for an example a single chrome tabs takes 2 gb of ram to run after effects and premiere pro simultaneously you need at least 32 gb of ram that will not give you the best experience however if you are not using several ram intensive application at once then this machine is a beast if you do simple editing like faceless videos or face cam videos with some products b-rolls or review like me then it will work like a champ. I use 4K 10-bit H.265 footage, slow motion clips, and still Premiere Pro runs smoothly. Playback is decent. CapCut also performs smoothly. Background removal is fast and color grading works great. Even feature like motion tracking works flawlessly. So if you are a dedicated CapCut video editor, this device is perfect for you. If your budget is strictly $599, you can go for the base model. Even if you're using Adobe Premiere Pro, then Without using the After Effects, just using Adobe Premiere Pro, this machine will work perfectly fine for you. If you can stretch the budget a little, I'll recommend upgrading to 24 GB of RAM and 512 GB of storage. In that case, you'll get additional 8 GB of RAM and you'll get faster internal SSD read drive. The base 256 GB feels up very fast, especially if you install Adobe Creative Cloud apps like Adobe Premiere Pro, After Effects, Photoshop, Illustrator, Lightroom, and few other applications like Resolve or CapCut, it will eventually fill up your internal storage. In my case, in my internal drive, I have only 100 GB left. And I know within a few days, eventually it will be dropped to 50 GB. So you need to consider this limitation. Yeah, I have seen many people are swapping their internal SSD with third party SSD. That is faster than the Apple internal SSD. I'm sure 90% people will not take the hassle to open the Mac mini and swapping their memory. If you're a video editor and works with large file, you'll need an external SSD. I use a 4TB SSD and edit directly from it. No issue with the storage. I also use SSD enclosure when needed. Even with the Benzie Resolve, I notice smooth editing performance compared to Adobe Premiere Pro. Resolve export the video even faster in my experience. I like the Resolve more in terms of the speed and rendering. For an example, with 10-bit H.265 footage, the Premiere Pro takes longer to export on this Mac Mini. This is an editing PC, not an exporting machine. It will take significantly more time to export a video compared to a M4 Max chip or even it's slower than M1 Max chip in terms of exporting time just because it has less encoder machine in it. So to summarize, if your budget is around $599 and you want a computer for video editing and graphic design, then the Mac Mini M4 base variant is one of the best option available right now. But remember, you need to aware of the limitation. If you plan to do very professional, high-end work, this machine will fall short. But if you're a new editor, this is the perfect machine to start with and you can eventually upgrade it later. Now let's talk about the three common problems and their solution. The first one, accessing the power button. The power button is in the back and it's not easy to reach. You can use a vertical stand or a dock with easier access. I use my dock from full top. It's a super convenient device. There is a cutout in the power button section for easy access. So I can just use that slot to power it on or power it off. But honestly, I don't turn off my Mac mini so often I just turn off my monitor when I am done. Mac mini doesn't draw that much power in idle mode. The problem two, shortage of storage. The base variant comes with 256 GB of internal storage and the read write speed is not that much fast. 
I am getting around 2000 Mbps write speed and 2800 to 2900 Mbps read speed. For video production, you need more space. You can get Thunderbolt 4 external SSD enclosure. I use a 4 terabyte SSD inside of my pool top dock that gives me around 900 Mbps read write speed, which is good enough for my video editing workflow. I also use a NAS. The one thing I regret is not upgrading the 10 g Ethernet. To edit from the NAS, I have to use an Ethernet adapter. It's just a 2.5G adapter, so I don't get the best speed there. Now, the last problem that is limited ports. So you'll not get enough USB A ports or the audio outputs on the front side. So how you can solve that? So in my case, the solution is full top dock. So I use that dock and that give me additional type a port additional hdmi out and the audio and headphone combo jack is in the back side so and that gives me a clean look when i'm using my audio monitor if you want to purchase the exact dock that i'm using you can purchase it from the link in the description and if your budget is 599 dollar you won't find a better performance computer than mac mini m4 at this price range just be aware of the limitation if you are aware with it you won't face any issue so that is all for today i hope you have liked this video if you have liked this video and learned something new from this one then you can give me a thumbs up and if you need this channel want to learn video editing or even want to learn more about different video editing gears then you can subscribe to this channel to get more video just like this one i'll catch you guys on the next one until then goodbye